Hello, today I'm going to show you everything you have to know about for loops and while loops. I'll also show you some cool things that most tutorials don't show you, so make sure to watch it till the end. So for let's start with for loops, and for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to add all the numbers of an array. So let's create the array. I'm going to name it numbers, and let's put in as many values as you want. You can make, I wrote 20, uh, 4, you can write 20, 30, as, as many as you want. So, first of all, we need a variable that's going to store the sum of the numbers, and we have to initialize it. So, it's going to be sum, and obviously, since we still haven't added anything to it, we want to, we want to make it equal to zero. So there are two ways of writing a for loop. In this scenario, I'll show you the least common way, which is actually the simplest, and that is uh, doing for y, which is basically the vari a variable for y in numbers. And basically, every time it iterates, it's going to iterate the um, the amount of very as much as many times as the amount of variables that we have in the array so in this case it's four so it's going to iterate four times and y will be equal in this case in the first the first time it iterates it's going to be equal to four and the second time it's going to be equal to six and so on so to sum the variables we just want to do sum plus equals y and if we print this it should give us the sum so let's check it out so it's equal to 21 Okay, so the other way of writing this requires a little bit more of code, and it's the regular way, I guess, of of doing this. So instead of doing for y in numbers, we want to do for y in range. And range can take one argument, two arguments, or three. I'll show you examples for the three cases, but in this case, we only want one argument, and that is the number of times it has to iterate so since we have four values it's going to be four but let's say we don't have we don't know the value of of, of this so let's just get the length of the array and that is len of numbers so right now if we execute this it's not going to give us the sum it's going to give us a different value basically this is because it starts at zero the y starts at zero then it goes to one, two, three, and then it stops. It only iterates four times. So the way of summing the adding the, the values is accessing the the numbers. So we want to do this by doing numbers y. And this should give us 21 if we execute it. So you can see it works perfectly fine. So now let's do an example in which a in which we will pass two arguments to range. So for y in range, let's say the first argument is going to be the starting point of y. So normally it would be zero, but if we're going to type two arguments, it doesn't really make sense to type in zero. So let's st say that it starts at five and we want to make it finish at 20. So instead of typing 20, we want to do 21. And that is because it starts at, it's going to basically go up until the last value minus one, okay? Because it starts at five. Because as it starts basically the first element is zero, one, two, and that that's how it works. So what we're going to do is print y. And as you can see, this is going to print every number from five to twenty. As you can see, the last value is twenty, not twenty-one. So now let's say that we want to only that we only want um, even numbers. So let's type in here six, and to do this we can add a third argument, and basically this is going to be the step, what it basically means how much you add to the variable y. So in this case, since we only want even numbers, we want to make a step two. The default is 1, so if we execute this, it's going to do the same as before, but if we type in 2, it's going to give us only the even, the even numbers. So you can see 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. 
So you can also do this in descending order. So let's say we want to make it go from 10 to 1. So instead of writing 1 as before, we need to get the value before that, which is 0. And this step will be minus 1, which is negative. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. So now let's go into while loops. And let's do just something very simple. Let's say that we have a num equal a variable num equal to zero. And what we want to do is type in while. And while num is less than, let's say, six, we want to execute some code. Basically, what this is going to do, if we do print num, this is going to execute an infinity until infinity so basically this will collapse so what we want to do is make sure we add one to the number and this will go from zero to five as you can see it, it, it iterated six times and it finished it, and it started at zero and it finished it at five so that's basically how a while loop works so now let's do something that combines while loops and for loops in a way that we get, we you get a sense of when to use a while loop and when to use a for loop. So let's say that we want to get the all the divisors of a number that the that the user types in. So let's do num equals to int input and let's type in here a string that says enter a number. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that number is zero greater or or equal to zero. So while num is less than zero, we basically want to duplic duplicate this code, okay? Because we want to make sure it's greater than zero. And now something that you might not know if you are already familiar with uh, loops is that you can write in else after this and it's not like in the conditional this else will basically will basically execute once the while loop or the for loop is done so let's just instead of let's just run this um let's say print um the number is brackets Dot format num. So if we execute this, if we type in let's say minus ten, it's going to t uh, prompt the user to type in another number. So let's say four, and we have a error. Oh, I I didn't use the, I put a square bracket instead of a regular bracket. My bad. So if we type in four, the number will be four. And I also have a spelling error here. So, my bad, sorry about that. So now what we want to do is get all the divisors of that number. So to do that, we're going to use a for loop. So basically this, this while loop is doing something that the for loop cannot do. And now we're going to do a, well, basically you can do you can always use, almost always use a while loop instead of a for loop, but it's cleaner in a sense to have a for loop for what we're going to do now. It's like more easy to understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to do for y in range. And we're going to start at one because we cannot divide by zero. And we want to type in num plus one because we want to end at the number, basically. So if the number, the remainder of the number uh, uh, divided by y is equal to zero, we basically want to, I uh, need to make sure we put the tab in. Uh, so basically we want to print y. And this will basically print all the, the, the divisors of a number. So let's type in, I don't know, a hundred. 
So these are all the divisors of 100. So another thing that you can do with for loops is a nested for loop. And this is basically something, it's, it's basically a loop inside the loop. So I'll just show you a very simple example. So for num1 in range, and let's say 3, just something very simple. We want to do another for loop for num2 in range. And we can do, we can make it go from 2 to 5. So that is actually from 2 to 4. And we're going to print num1. Let's put a comma. And num2. And if we execute this, it's going to be very easy to understand once you, especially if you do it, your, if you code along with the video. So basically we have first 0, 2, then, okay, I'll, I'll explain it step by, step by step. So this line runs and basically it starts at 0 and then we have another for loop and this goes from 2 to 5. So basically this is going to execute four times, sorry, five times, no, three times. And it's going to be 0, 2, 0, 3, and 0, 4. Then this other for loop runs again. Now the value is 1, and the for loop, this for loop does the same as before, and it's 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and so on. And this is very useful when you do like more complex things on your projects and stuff like that. I'm actually planning on doing a, another tutorial of nested for loops for more complicated things just so you have a better understanding. I just wanted to make this video as short as possible and have like all, like the essential things of for loops and while loops. So if you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, make sure to like and subscribe since I'm, make, I'm making more videos about these topics and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye.